Okay, hi everybody. It's uh, Orly Bradley here with Pampered Chef. Um, we're uh, gonna do a great demo today of some bruschetta and zucchini pasta. Uh, but we're gonna wait a few minutes to get started until everybody comes on in. Um, so we're just gonna take a second and make sure that everybody, um, you know, has made it. So hope everybody's doing well. Just trying to get my live feed up here so that I can see. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jessica, thanks for joining us. I'm still having a little trouble getting my feed going here, but that should be fixed in just a minute. Let's see. If I can see my own live, that would really be good. There we go. Can you see if your live is on your phone uh, on your phone or something? Just so that because I, I can't get it on this. Speaking of this. I cannot. So okay. we'll do that if you well, don't mind. Over there. Yeah. So it won't show up on this at all. It won't show up on this at all because that's me. I'm signed into it. Oh. So sorry that. about that. Okay. Is that okay. scroll mm -hmm. all the way? Okay. Jessica Coley says you look so cute in your apron. Oh, thanks, Jess. <laughs> Oh, there we go. I'm live now. Okay, a little bit of a little bit of a lag, but it's okay. There we go. Alrighty, well, and we just want to thanks everybody for for coming today, and uh, just you know, we're gonna do this uh, great pasta dish. It's uh, again bruschetta and zucchini pasta. Uh, we're also going to do a uh, citrus cucumber infused water. And we have a little surprise for dessert at the very end. So it's uh, going to be fun and it's going to be yummy. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start off um, with the um, grilling some chicken. Uh, that's going to be uh, the chicken, obviously, part of the bruschetta and chicken zucchini pasta. And we've got over here on the stove already heating up our uh, grill press and our non-stick griddle pan. So if you want to come on over here and take a look. And this is Scott. Hello. Okay, so I am preheating our non-stick grill pan here, and I'm also preheating the, uh, the, the press, the grill press is on top of it. So uh, take a look there. We've read about medium-high heat, and uh, these are, by the way, really solid. This thing is cast iron very very solid very heavy and the grill pans the same way um, I've used this for a couple of weeks now and I have never had a problem getting anything uh, cleaned off of it. it it comes clean really really quickly so I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna go ahead and put the chicken in okay and we're just gonna lay the chicken I've got what I've got here is some chicken thighs uh, I've got them uh, marinating in some olive oil and a spice mixture that I use quite often. Uh, you can use whatever you want, uh, Mexican seasoning, you can use uh, seasoned salt, salt and pepper, uh, whatever you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that right in the skillet here. Move this off to the side. And just lay them out as evenly as you can, get them flat. Yeah, you like that sizzle. And by the way, these prongs I'm using, I'll, I'll tell you about them in just a second here. Spaced out so if you're cutting as little as possible, but that will be okay. Let's put this through. So once you're in, and now they cook. Let them sit for a while. Uh, now, these tongs I'm using, uh, these are, uh, I'm not really wild about rubber tip tongs. I'm a big believer in, in the metal ones, but I must say, uh, I have yet to drop anything with these. These are they're, they're really, really good. And one thing I like about them is the grip there. Um, you don't see many tongs like this anymore. If you get a look there, there's a little notch, a little knob there, goes up and down. What that does is the enable you to use with one hand. So I press in the fingers like this, flip it upside down, it opens. Back up, it stays locked. It's all one hand. If you go to a, a different set of tongs that I have, like this, this, you have to punch in and turn. It's a two-handed operation. I used to see more tongs like this, but I don't see many. These are really, they've become my favorites in about a week and a half. So I really do like them. Uh, so we're going to let these cook for a little while. We'll come back to them once they've browned a little bit. 
So I think we're ready to go to some of the prep over here. Are we ready, hon? We're ready, we're ready. All right. Yeah. All right, okay, so we're gonna chicken, I'll let you know if you're not ready. There we go. All right, so we're gonna start off by, hello. Uh, there we are, hi. Uh, we're gonna start off by prepping the uh, zucchini for the, um, uh, the zucchini part of the pasta. And we're gonna use our veggie strip maker. Um, it's made of plastic. These sharp little notches here will um, make the pasta out of the zucchini. Um, but because they're plastic, you can run your fingers over them and no injuries. So it's a really nice tool. If you wanna get your kids more active in the kitchen, right. this would be a nice option. Here, here, have some zucchini, slice that up. You exactly. don't worry too much about it. Exactly. Anything to get kids in the kitchen. And Hi, Courtney. Um, it also has some nonstick grips on the bottom there and a notch in case you want to shave your um, vegetables over a bowl. But what we're gonna do today is work on our flexible cutting mat. Um, using the green one, I like to keep the green one for vegetables, keep everything nice and safe, and you know, uh, keep away from cross-contamination and whatnot. Um, so I've got our zucchini here, and I'm gonna use the eight inch chef's knife uh, from Pampered Chef. And I'm just gonna cut the top off of there. Or me here. I know, I said hi to her. And chop the bottom off of that. And I'm gonna throw those over in the prep bowl, or the trash bowl. We're gonna go ahead and just prop this up and do some nice, slight, easy motions with the zucchini, sliding down, and it's gonna to start to create some noodles for us. Just like that, nice and slim and straight. So we're gonna go back, and what we wanna do is keep twisting the zucchini because if we get into the middle of the zucchini, there's way too much water in there, and the seeds will make a mess of the whole dish. So we just wanna keep spinning, keep twisting, and getting all of our zucchini ready to go into the, uh, into the pasta bowl. There we go. You're sticking to the edges with that, right? Yes, sticking to the edges, absolutely. All right, oh, um, you know what we didn't pull out? What's that? We need the chicken stock. We need to do oh, the pasta. The I almost forgot about the pasta. It's the most important part of the dish and we'll get back to more zucchini in a little bit. All right, so for the pasta, um, we're gonna use um, our everyday pot. This pan is by far my most favorite pot that Pampered Chef has. Um, this pot goes on the stove top in the microwave, thank you. Um, it goes under the broiler, um, in the oven, it can even go on the grill. It has, it, there it is, it has a five year guarantee on it, it's completely dishwasher safe, and it's two and a half quarts, so it's got a nice big um, volume for the food that you wanna cook in it. So what I'm gonna do is take some pasta here, uh, this looks like spaghetti. It's actually uh, called bucatini. It's a little bit thicker than spaghetti, but it's got little holes in it too. We like it better here, but you can certainly use spaghetti or whatever you have um, pasta-wise at home. I'm gonna break it in half. There we go. And put that in the pan, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get some of our um, sodium-free um, chicken stock that I like to use. And this is going to be uh, two cups. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my silicone prep bowls that are marked on the inside and they have these great little markings. This happens to be a two cup bowl. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that to the two cup line and pour that over my bucatini or spaghetti, whichever you're using. There we go. And just want to make sure that the pasta is nice and wet and covered. And I'm just going to add another little splash just for good measure. All right. Good measure. Ha ha. All right. I'm going to take the everyday pan, lit it up, and we're going to head over to the microwave where it's going to go in for five minutes. There we go. Thank you very much. There we go. 
five minutes, and we'll come back. In the meantime, how's that chicken coming? Uh, we have another couple minutes here, so okay. go and finish up the zucchini, and then uh, we'll be set to go here. Wonderful. Yep, I'm going to go back to the zucchini, and I'm going to keep spinning. I'm going to keep on slicing and spinning to get this done. And again, just around and around so that we stay away from the seeds because we do not want a wet, soggy pasta. All right. There we go. We've got our zucchini all done up here. That's going to be so pretty. The color is going to be so nice on this. All right. And that will work too with, we've used what, carrots? We can, it? yep, you can use carrots for it. You can uh, do uh, maybe apples with it if you want to give your kids some, uh, like an applesauce kind of, or a apple pasta kind of thing for a dessert. And um, good for slaw. it would be very good for slaw, for coleslaw with a cabbage or whatever. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of really great uses. Trying to think of as many applications for this as I can. Right. You might be able to use it for uh, shredding things too. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to try the chocolate one of these days. One of these days, so we'll try it with chocolate. That, that sounds really good, actually. All right. Well, while we've got the zucchini on the side here, okay, we can come back to the chicken. Check the chicken. Go ahead. Okay. So, check out the color we have on that chicken. I added no oil to the skillet to part the these in. And you notice, no sticking whatsoever. They're all over the place. And it's still, this is the thing, a lot of non-stick skillets won't brown well. Well, those are very well, they're pretty well browned, I'd say. So these are ready to go. Um, again, quickly. It didn't, didn't take that long to cook it all. That's because the press was down there compressing everything, giving us, uh, you know, saving us a little bit of time. So, we're off there. I'm going to go ahead and throw these into one of my prep bowls here and get it ready for the next step. The chicken's done. One thing about this, this skillet, too, where you go back over there, uh, this guy will go into the oven as well. Okay, it's, it's, it's all metal here, but there's also an attachment. Look at the handle here and get a good look at it. This handle is plastic, right? So how does this go in? If you pull back on that, it detaches like that, and this is oven safe. And it goes back on just as easily. So, well, if you're smarter than I am, uh, and it goes in stove top oven either way. And that's sometimes I'll be browning something on the grill and want to put it in the oven to finish it off. This is perfect for that. Perfect application for that. So, the chicken is ready. That's it. Okay. If I came home and I've got a half an hour to, to to make dinner, which happens quite often, um, I'm good to go. This is this is half the battle right here. So, uh, I guess we're we're back to what are we doing now? Uh, well, what we can do now is um, we can start on the bruschetta. All right. So we'll come over here and do that part. Um, we've got some plum tomatoes here, which are absolutely beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and cut the rough chop these um, into uh, four wedges here, and then chop them again, just for some small pieces. There we go. And I'll say to this, it takes a lot to really sell me a knife. I'm very, very picky about my knives. Um, it didn't take much for this to do it. It's, I'm very scared is, of this knife. Yeah. It's very sharp. Which is, you know, what's the most dangerous tool in the kitchen? A dull a knife. A dull knife, right? A dull knife, absolutely. But this thing is great. It's versatile. You can use it for, for anything. The chef's knife is, is tremendous. Yes. It's got good weight. It's got good balance. Good heads. It's, it's it does. It's German steel. Uh, we love the... Uh, some of the best knives are our drone boost top and whatnot. Exactly. This is a, it's a solid, solid knife. I really like it a lot. Exactly. And this knife does come with a lifetime guarantee. And that's the other thing, too. That's the other, that's that the, the big other winner thing. right there. Anything should happen to this knife, yeah. Pampered Chef covers it for the life of the of the owner, actually. It's a lifetime guarantee. So, so the younger you are when you buy that, the better off. The better off you'll be. Absolutely. So I've got my awesome tomato all chopped up here. All right, and there we go. And then I'm gonna grab our MFP, or manual food processor. This is my favorite bit. That's your favorite, huh? My favorite one. 
one. All right. It's got a lock here for storage to bring the handle down. And then this goes up just like that, and it's gonna pump and cut everything that we put into it. Just this is the thing that I showed you earlier today on the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our tomatoes to the MFP. There we go. I am also going to chiffonade and then add some beautiful basil that we have from a beautiful little plant that we've got out back. Chiffonade, what a term. What chiffonade. Is, what does chiffonade mean? Well, we're going to roll this stuff up. There we go. Let's remove some of the stalk here. And we're going to roll it up and then we're going to slice it. And it's going to look very, very pretty and very, very French until we destroy it in the food processor. Jessica says she wants to buy it. Good. <laughs> Fantastic. We haven't even used it yet. We haven't even used it yet, exactly. It's uh, number 2593 on our Pampered Chef website, which is pamperedchef.biz, um, B-I-Z, slash clan Bradley. And in goes our beautiful basil. All righty. And then we have a very important additional ingredient is garlic. I love this, this is my, my garlic. Favorite. This is my favorite part of I the whole so much demo. garlic in my life, I can't even tell you. But, but exactly. Watch this. this is amazing. So this is our garlic press. It's um, sturdy aluminum. It's about six inches long. And it comes with this brush that will clean out every little hole in the press so that you never get garlic stuck in there. But this is the most ama amazing part. Garlic with the paper goes on, it goes into the garlic press, okay? And then all you gotta do is squeeze right into the bowl and you squeeze as tight as you can. There you go. And the garlic just comes right on out the other side. And when you open it, all that's left is paper. That's it. That's gone. We're gonna hit just, one more. I know, I love it. One more with the paper. We're gonna push that down and squeeze all that beautiful garlic in there. Oh my God, I wish you could smell this. It smells so good right now. All right, and we slice that right off. This is especially if you're gonna mix the garlic into something immediately. Um, I use mm -hmm. it for, for guacamole. Oh, it has a perfect application for guacamole. Absolutely. Uh, between this and the mix and chop, which we'll get to on Later show, a I'm later assuming. show. Yep. Uh, my guacamole is really never been done. Yep. Absolutely. I don't think so. So we've got two of the guacamole. Uh, two guacamole. You got me guacamole. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you've got uh, two of the garlic in there. We've got our basil in there. We've got our tomatoes in there. All we have left now to add is our olive oil. So we're going to add about two teaspoons of the olive oil in there. I like a little extra olive oil, so I freehanded a bit. And the chop, the, the top of the manual food processor goes right on top. Don't let that garlic escape. Naughty garlic, get back in there. All right, and then we just start pumping. And the more you pump, the more it gets chopped and gets all married together. This is gonna make amazing salsa. This is gonna make incredible applesauce or baby food. And the more you chop, the more it gets all integrated inside. So we're gonna go a little faster. Some of the tomatoes rose up to the top and did not wanna get cut up. We're gonna fix that. And you know too, that I love my food processor. I do too. I'm gonna use it, I've gotta get it out, I've gotta plug it in. The, the, the tub is enormous. This is tiny, this is quick. You exactly. wash it, you put it back, it's no, it's no, no fuss, no muss. Exactly. So sometimes, you know, the, the mechanical hair we go. type stuff is, is, yep. is an improvement. So it's real nice, they're kind of rough chops. It smells incredible. Fresh basil. Fresh the fresh basil. basil, the fresh garlic. It's all just absolutely amazing. So we'll just set that down right there. And then I think I heard the pasta already beep from the microwave. So we'll have yep. to check that and pull that out. Should we bring it over there? Are you gonna give it a stir? Um, yeah, let's uh, check it and give it a stir. Okay. Let's just pop that in there for right now. My towel. Okay. 
Here, let me grab the, the spoon. Okay. 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 And go ahead. Oh, yes. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So there is our pasta. It's been five minutes um, in the microwave with the uh, the chicken um, broth, stock, yeah. the chicken broth, stock, stock. Yep. whatever you got. Whatever you got, exactly. And uh, we're gonna add more to this so that it's not quite as liquidy and it's gonna cook some more. So I'm gonna bring it, actually, you know what? It's fine right here. I'm gonna go and grab the bruschetta real quick. Okay. And the zucchini. I'm gonna add that as well. So first we've got our beautiful bruschetta with all the gorgeous colors and the flavors and the smells. It's just really, really incredible. And I'm gonna grab our zucchini. Noodles up. There we go. We'll just sprinkle the zucchini in there. And doesn't that just look absolutely gorgeous? The colors are amazing. Notice there's not a lot of fat in here, guys. There's, in fact, we've only added a little olive oil to the bruschetta mix. There's no butter, there's no um, other oil or anything like that. I think at this point, if you wanted to add some heat, you could add some uh, red pepper flakes. You could add some um, red pepper flakes. You could add flake. some more salt and pepper if you think it's, it's mm -hmm. maybe some Italian seasoning might work here. Indeed. In fact, I can throw just a little tiny bit of salt in here just to build some layers of flavor. We'll do a little bit of pepper as well, just to add to it. There we go. We'll give that a good mix. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it back in the microwave for another five minutes while we get the chicken prepared to add to our dish. All right, All right let me pop this door open for you, babe. I'm gonna cover this up. Yep. Five minutes. Okay. Yep, five minutes. And we are off, and here is the chicken. All right, wonderful. All right, it's a bowl, are you ready to go? Remember that? Yep. Wonderful, wonderful. It's had a, a chance to sit a little bit. You don't want to cut chicken right away, Thank really, you. and really any meat. You want to let it cool off a little bit before you, you take a knife to it. Uh, you maintain a lot of juiciness that way, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of tenderness. Otherwise, it'll, it'll dry out a little bit if you, uh, you cut into it too soon, especially true with, with beef, I think. But the chicken, pork, same way. Awesome. All right, well now here is the way that we're gonna cut the chicken. This is the neatest and coolest way to do it. Of course, you can take it out on the cutting board and use a knife, of course, but we have the salad chopper. It's two titanium coated blades, sharp as razors, just like that. It looks like a scissor. And we're gonna go in here and chop up the chicken in some nice rustic pieces. So we're just gonna go in and chop away. You can see the steam coming up from the chicken as we move it around. So it's not super cool. But it's not cool super enough. cool, but it's cool enough. It's been sitting for a while, like meat should. Those are really neat. Okay. When you get these, you get two periods. You get one for the kitchen, you get one for outside making mulch and whatnot. Yeah. I'm kidding, don't do that. <laughs> Buy 12 pair. Okay. There you go. One for each type of meat. One for each type of meat, there you go. All right, we're just gonna continue to chop this up into some really nice rusticy pieces. All right. Almost done, we got some chicken on the bottom that's trying to hide from us. There's a big old piece back here. There we go, hi there. Okay, beautiful. All right, so the chicken is chopped up for the most part, which is really good, and it'll make for a nice rustic addition to the um, the veggies and the pasta. And of course, if you wanna do a vegetarian dish, you don't have to add the chicken. You can make it just the vegetables and the pasta, of course. It would be just as delicious if you wanted to do it that way. But you can see in just a couple of plunges here, our chicken is cut up and it's ready to go. We'll just set this aside while we wait for the pasta to finish up. Okay, I'm gonna put that over there. And then in the meantime, while we're waiting for the pasta, uh, I'll just go over a couple of quick things that um, we used already so far. Uh, so we do have again the eight inch chef's knife, which is um, eight inches, of course. It's a German steel and it does have a lifetime guarantee on it. 
and it comes with a very nifty little shield so that when you put your knives into the kitchen drawer, you don't have to worry about reaching in and cutting yourself. So we're it's also just... useful for uh, carrying around if you're going to. If you, if you oh, if you need to like... Cook, you go from place to place. There you go. go right with you. There you go. And there's the nice shield and I'm not, not cutting myself. That's perfect. So that is our eight inch uh, chef's knife. And that is uh, item number 1575 on the Pampered Chef website. Uh, let's see. So we've got that there. Uh, we did go over our um, manual food processor, the MFP. Um, this and this has a three cup bowl and it has this beautiful sharp blade on the inside that cuts everything up nice and uh, chunky or salsa-y or whichever way you want it to go. Um, just a couple of quick pumps, gets everything chopped up really nicely for you. And uh, the manual food processor is item 2593. Uh, it does have a five year guarantee and the bowl, the blade, and the additional lid for storage in case you have leftovers that you wanna keep are all dishwasher safe. The lid, hand wash, absolutely. Just set those over there. Alrighty. Now I've been using the silicone measuring bowls here. Um, they come in three sizes. It's actually a set. It comes in the one cup, two cup, and three cup, and I've been using the three cup one for my garbage bowl, quote unquote garbage bowl, although I will use the end of this cucumber for sure, or uh, zucchini. Um, the bowls are number 1751. They've got wonderful little measurement marks on the inside. So you can see your cups, how much you're using. There's also milliliters on the other side, should you be interested in doing that. And the, um, these are freezer safe. Uh, they go to the microwave. They're also good in the oven up to 500, I'm sorry, 400 degrees. And they come with a freezer safe lid to uh, you know, keep your leftovers in the freezer if you want to. All right. So, and they also nest very nicely. So the little one goes in the big one and then where the one goes in the two, the two goes into the three, and they all nest even when they're lidded up. And the lids, lids are right behind there. Oh, the lids are right behind here. Look at that. Right behind my recipes. So, and we've got the lids right here, as you can see. So they go in the, the one, they go on the two, and when there's nothing in the bottom of the bowl and they all fit nicely together, the top one goes on the third. Just like that. All right. So I'll just get these out of here. Oops. Awesome. Oh, kidok. So we have those there. And I think I did just hear our chicken. Yep. Be ready. Done. Throw that in the sink later. You bring it over there or do you want to work uh, over here? Yeah, let's, uh, well, do you have the, uh, the tongs over there? Yeah, you do. do. And we have the chicken. I have to bring that over. Okay. Yep. Excuse me one second. I'm going to put this in the sink. There you go. Thank you. If you lift the lid. You. All right. Very nice. That is beautiful. The pasta is cooked perfectly. There's still some um, stock at the bottom, but as this steams, it's going to steam away and it'll, it'll thicken up really nicely here, especially with all these beautiful vegetables the in here. And the cheese we're going to add, you're right. So we're gonna go ahead and add the chicken to our dish, just like that. And the chicken's already fully cooked, so we don't have to worry about, you know, putting raw chicken in with anything else. We're just gonna to toss it up a little bit, just like that. And the thing about that, this dish is really it's as good as it looks. Oh my gosh, yes. It's it, so delicious. It doesn't seem like we've done a whole lot, but we've used fresh ingredients. Mm -hmm. used to, we we, we chopped up the zucchini there, we chopped up the basil, we chopped up the tomatoes. Everything is really right off the vine, and that's the draw. It that tastes is, like it. This is a very fresh tasting dish. It is light. a very fresh, fresh tasting dish, and, um, and it's healthy. And it's, it, it, like you said, it tastes as good as it looks. It really does. Absolutely. All right, we're going to let that settle just for a moment. I'm going to go come over here for a second, but I'll be right back. 
I'm going to grab our microplane uh, processor here so that we can do some cheese for the top of the um, pasta. All right, so this um, microplane is the coarse grinder. It's got bigger holes on it here. It has this amazing handle that lets you... Um, hi, Danielle. Oh, hi, Danielle. Um, we have the, this handle that opens up and um, you can either have it just like this over a bowl, over a cutting mat, or you can angle it so that it stands like that and it locks into place. So whichever way you wanna use it, it's multi, a multi-use tool, it's really fabulous. And it does have this safety handle um, on it, which has a track so that it tax, attaches itself, excuse me, to the microplane. And we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of cheese inside the food holder, just like this. I'll just drop that right in there. And if you'll follow me, we're gonna go back over to the pasta dish and I'm gonna go ahead and add the Parmesan cheese. So our cheese is inside the uh, food holder. We're gonna go ahead and drop this on here. Make sure that it's nice and sturdy and stable, cause fingers, you know? And we just start the grating process. And you can see this is a, a bit thicker, a coarser grate for Parmesan. I like coarser cheese, but it does also come in a fine grate as well. And the finer grate is, is, is used for Parmesan for hard cheeses, but nutmeg. Um, yes. Orange zest, things like that. The eat ones. It's probably a little too big to use for orange zest, but for cheese, it's perfect. It's perfect. We have potatoes. Yes. What have you? Exactly. And the best part about using the food holder is that every little bit of the cheese, except for this tiny little piece that came out, every bit of the cheese got used and put into the into our pasta dish. So that is our delicious and fresh bruschetta pasta with Parmesan cheese, it's got the zucchini in it, and uh, chicken, and now our beautiful Parmesan on top. And it's gonna be so, so delicious when we eat this. It really is great. We've had this already, what, three or four times yeah. since we started, so it's a really wonderful dish. Yeah, we, we need to start making other things. <laughs> <laughs> I like this dish, I will eat it all the time. So, all right, so that's our first recipe. That is done, and here we are. It's only been 30 minutes, so dinner is done in 30 minutes, everybody. Although I will say that if you are so inclined, um, since this pot will also go under the broiler, you can even add more cheese on the top, put it under the broiler, and give yourself a nice little cheese crust, and uh, that would probably not be the worst thing in the world. I would say that that would yeah. not be the worst thing yeah, in the world. Yeah, that just occurred to me. Mm. Next time. Next time we'll do that, absolutely. All right, so that was the um, bruschetta and zucchini pasta. And of course, if you hang out long enough, you can watch the replay. We'll leave the video up for, um, you know, 24 hours or so. Um, and now what we're gonna do next is our um, cucumber and citrus infused water, okay? So what I've got here, I've pre-rinsed pre a, lemon and a, a lemon and a lime. Gotta know my fruits and my vegetables. And I have our cucumber here as well. And what we're gonna use for this is our simple slicer. Now the simple slicer is just like the microplane in that it has its own handle, uh, a food handler, which also runs on a track. And the most important reason for this is this blade right here. This thing is like a razor, like a laser blade actually. It has four settings, lock, one, two, and three. One is a little thin, two is a little thicker, three is a lot thicker. So there's different settings that you can use. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the second setting on this because I want my fruit and my vegetable to be just a little thick so that I can add it to my water. All right, we'll start off with um, the cucumber. I'll just take a little piece of it here. We'll cut that in half and we're gonna um, hook the, the food holder onto the track. Again, for safety reasons, because that blade is something else. Cucumber goes right there. We've got teeth here to hold the cucumber in place. I think we need to cut the cucumber down a little bit more, just so that the, the holder will close on us. There we go. There we go, perfect, all right? And again, I've set this to two so that you can see just how the slices come out. And here are the first few slices, just like that. 
we can set it down to one and do these tiny little slices which you can see are like little windows. They're so clear. Those are potato chip. These are potato chip, potato. exactly. And then we can go up to three and get some really thick cucumber slices. So those are your those options are there, one, two, and three. Salad. Those are good salad cucumbers. I like that size for salad. Yep, I'm gonna go back down to two just to finish off this piece of cucumber. And there it goes, it's done now. Just the little butt end came out of it. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my quick stir pitcher over here, which I've already put some nice cold water in. I'm gonna just lift up the lid here, and I'm gonna straight up add the cucumbers right on in. We'll start with our little tiny skinny ones. One, two, and three. This is the size two. We're gonna use these for the water. I won't put the threes in there a little thick. All right, but we have our beautiful Cucumbers going into the water, like that. We'll set this off to the side for just a second. Alrighty, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use the um, slicer for the lemon and for the lime as well. So we'll get some lemon going here. We'll just cut that down in half. So we can put this into our food prep. And I'm gonna use two for the lemons as well, cause it's got the thick rind on it and you know, we don't necessarily need the water, the lemon to be uh, window thin. So what we're doing mainly is we're, we're, we're flavoring the water. Yes, it's so an infused it's, water. Exactly. So it's really, it's not a, a huge thing. Right. Well, we want to be able to slice it and not, not leave too much rind in it because the rind can get bitter. See, like I'm not going to put that piece in because it's got a lot of rind on it, but here we've got some beautiful lemon in the nice number two slice, and that's going to go right into our water there. We can even finish up this, the lemon while we're at it. Pull this one out. Watch those fingers. Move that to three and let it come out. There we go. Add it down to two. Make sure we're on track again. There we go, just like that. And we'll finish this slicing with the lemons. And this will make, and look at how quickly that went. There's the rind of that third, that last half of the lemon again. Open back up to three to get that out of there. There we go, more beautiful lemon going right into our water. Along with the cucumbers, it's gonna be so, so refreshing and delicious. All right, and the last one we'll do now will be the lime because I just love lemon and lime together. All right. And the thing is too, is you don't have to use water here necessarily. You can put seltzer in there, you can put any you other can. Rum, the old syrups or adult beverages, mm -hmm. whatever you like in there. It's really versatile. I've seen recipes uh, for cold brew using this pitcher. Indeed. I've, I've seen recipes for, for smoothie type things. So exactly. It's really a versatile concept that you're creating. There we go. All right, our lime wanted to give us a little bit of trouble, but we got it. Crack that one open. All right, and there's our beautiful lime. It smells so fresh and so good in here. All right, the lime's going in. I'm gonna hit the other side of the lime as well. Take some of that pith off of there. It keeps giving me trouble. All right, that goes there. Make sure we're back down to two. And slice. And there we go. It's so quick that you only have to slice once yeah, or twice you're, you're and it's everything's fine. done. So there's our limes, our lemons, and our cucumber in our beautiful citrus water. I've got the top of the quickster pitcher with the plunger. This plunger will keep all your fruit and whatever else you put in there at the bottom. All right, and that way it will help you to just infuse the water. You don't wanna have chunks and pieces of cucumber when you're drinking. So you're just gonna go down and press, and you can see how some of the juice is being released from the fruit. 
clouding the water up some, but that's where all the flavor's coming from. It stirs things up a little bit. It stirs things up. This uh, particular pitcher is also good for making um, smoothies or power drinks or um, you know anything that you want to mix up. You just add your ingredients and pump your water or your drink until it comes to the right consistency I'm for guessing you. You could, you could probably make a really big container of chocolate milk if you were so inclined. You, I'm sure that you could actually. That would be really, really good, a big container if of chocolate milk. you got someone who you know, likes a lot of chocolate milk. I can't imagine no. anyone. I can't imagine either. There you go. All right, so there is our citrus infused, citrus and cucumber infused water. And this went into our um, quick, uh, quick stir pitcher, uh, which is also available on our website. Um, this pitcher's number is, let's see if I can find that for us. The quick stir pitcher is 2278 on our Pampered Chef website. And the website is in the um, post that's attached to the video here. So we've got that all set and we have 20 minutes to go for the hour. So does anybody have any questions or anything at all? Just chime in when you do. Chime in if you do, absolutely. And um, well, we do have one other special thing. We do. Thing. This is, I, I think you and I are the only, I don't think the boys know about this. The boys don't know about this. This is a special little dessert uh, that we've made. Uh, actually, you made with the uh, snack bar maker. Um, it is item number 100,001. So that's one, four zeros, and then a one at the end. It is dishwasher safe. Uh, for the pan and for the spatula that it comes with um, and it makes some incredible snack bars you can make chocolate bars you can make fruit and nut bars you can make milk and cereal bars you can pretty much do whatever you want so what we did yes what did you do dear well this morning we of course made a cake yes we did and we, we had a lot left to cut off yes so i had all these cake crumbs just trying to figure out what to do with them. Should we do with the cake crumbs? Uh, so I grabbed all the cake crumbs. I melted some chocolate chips in the microwave. Um, I got some uh, some granola. And I crumbled up some potato chips as well. Mm. And I put them all in here. And dropped this into the fridge, smoothed it out. Yeah. This and is this a silicone made pan. Them, it's, sil it's silicone, so it comes right up. Mm -hmm. and, and it made, made some little yummy sort of dessert bars. Dessert bars out of them. Yeah. So get a good look at them. Put them in, they firm up. And you wrap them in foil, send them in a lunchbox. Make 12 of them, eat them for dinner. <laughs> whatever your inclinations are. And uh, if I had had some uh, coconut on hand, I could have added that. You can chop up some peanuts. You can, uh, I saw some cookies, some shortbread cookies I was thinking about putting into these, maybe mm -hmm. next time. But it's just it's just a mold. That's all that it is. But you see how easily these come up. They're they're not sticking at all. That's the best part. So that's it. When you when you take them out of the mold and they don't break, they're they're you know perfect shape and everything like that. And um, I think this counts as a carrying case too. That is a carrying case. It comes with a lid so that you can carry it around. Mm -hmm. You can keep it covered and in the refrigerator for uh, freshness yep. as well. And. Um, yeah, the snack bar maker. It, the set comes with a small um, spatula that actually fits in the same grooves so that you can pat your ingredients down when you're making uh, one of the bars or some of the bars, you know. You can make different bars in each row if you want to. You can make a different bar in each cavity if you want to. Uh, just, you know, make everybody happy with whatever it is that they want to uh, eat. Cereal bars, Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies, Cheerios. yep. Yeah, pick your favorite cereal. And just, yeah, and go. <laughs> yep. Mix it in with some peanut butter, some chocolate, some, uh, some honey, what have you. Some exactly. Marshmallows. Marshmallows, those are your Rice Krispies. You can do marshmallows right? as well, absolutely. Yeah. And they come right out. That's Alrighty. one of the big things, too, when you, when you make Rice Krispie treats is they stick. They do stick. stick. So you got to spray it down as much as you can. Mm-hmm. They won't stick to this. You don't have to do that with this because it's silicone. They'll pop right out. Exactly. 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 So, right. and these are our snack bars. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, we need to try those. I think we will. We need to try Absolutely. Those.
the, the, the sharks are gathering. Have the noticed. sharks have gathered, exactly. So We're making the pasta. Pasta. Okay, fruit. Whoa, chocolate? Chocolate. Yeah. We have chocolate. That's awesome. All right. Well, um, I guess it's uh, 845. We can... Um, you know, wrap things up here. I do want to thank you all for joining us tonight um, in our kitchen uh, so that we could show you the Pampered Chef uh, products that we have. Um, don't forget, there is our website. It's uh, pamperedchef.biz slash clan bradley. That's C L A N B R A D L E Y, clan bradley. And um, Thank you so much for everything. Thank you to Michelle and to Corey for giving us this time slot. We really, really, truly do appreciate that as well. Thank you very much, absolutely. And I uh, can't wait to see Michelle back uh, in a couple of days after her vacation. I hope she's well rested. And uh, other than that, everybody have a great night and thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.